All right, welcome everyone. We're gonna dive into some seriously exciting side hustles that you're not gonna be stuck behind a computer screen. Get ready to break a sweat, turn your side gig into a full-blown cash-making adventure. Now you may be thinking, hold on, Derek, this sounds like starting a business. Well, guess what? It can be if you take your side hustle to the next level and it takes off, right? Who said you can't rock a job and launch your own money-making empire at the same time? So let's make those dreams a reality. All I can say is, how do you think most businesses start? So they mainly start as a side hustle that people do at nights or on the weekends until they make enough that they can just go full-time. Now, if you do not want to go into a full-time side hustle, just keep doing it to make extra cash. I mean, it's that easy, right? So it's time to see the 10 side hustles you might just break a sweat doing. First one up, let's go clean up some graffiti. Now the bread and butter clients for a graffiti removal business are gonna be business owners and like school boards. These people represent areas most often afflicted by graffiti. Now, to a lesser extent, you can do private homeowners or city managers will also require those services from time to time. Now, I have rentals and a couple of my rentals are in rougher areas of the town and I get kids writing graffiti on my garage in the back alley all the time. And the city will come out and they'll say, hey, Derek, clean this up or we're going to fine you. And so I got to clean it up. All right, so let's check out what you need to get started. So you're gonna need a truck, a car, or a van to start. You're also gonna need a pressure washer. And they range anywhere from like 200 bucks to a thousand bucks. Paint will be needed after you get the graffiti off and then you, know, you need to repaint the area that you power washed to make it look right. Now you need to get some business cards to hand out. Just start contacting different you know, businesses or the city to see if you can get a contract to clean up the graffiti or at least get on their vendor list. You also can just drive around, look for areas in your town with graffiti that somebody drew on like a building, you know, or businesses or different stuff and then stop by those businesses and give those owners your business card and say that you can help them clean it up. Now with this kind of business, you can charge a dollar to three dollars per square foot of the area that you need to clean. You should also charge about $35 to $70 for the trip charge. Okay, so next up, we're gonna start a lawn mowing service, right? Now I see trucks pulling trailers with lawn mowers all the time in my city. I see these different landscaping businesses everywhere. So I'm thinking to myself, man, this must be profitable because I see them everywhere. The beauty of this side hustle is that it requires low startup costs. You have flexible hours, and it has a really high demand. So once you gain a customer, you're gonna keep those customers for life unless you really mess up their lawn and then they'll fire you. Now everyone needs their lawn mowed. I mean, everyone. Many people and businesses, they just don't like mowing their own grass, right? They want somebody to do it for them. So the equipment you need is just really straightforward. You're gonna need a car, a truck, or van with a hitch and you're also gonna need a trailer to haul around your equipment. So you're gonna need a riding commercial lawn mower, a push mower, you're gonna need a weed trimmer, leaf blower, broom, shovel, and a rake. Now I would also have a toolbox handy in case you need to like fix the mower or use you know the tools to fix anything that breaks down. Now the average cost to start a residential lawn care business is around $6,900, right? Now the average cost to start a commercial lawn care business is gonna be a lot more expensive, $75,000. Now how much you charge all depends on where you live and start the side hustle. So here is a cost estimate used by many if you have like a one acre plot and you estimate that it will take about two employees one hour to complete mowing it, then you pay the employees let's say 15 bucks an hour and you estimate $5 for the fuel cost for the job, then your total variable cost is 35 bucks. Now, if you wanna earn 50% margin, which is what I would do, you need to multiply your variable cost by two in order to come up with a price quote uh, for the customer. 
In this example, that would be 70 bucks. Okay, so you're probably asking, hey, how do I market this business? I would just take flyers, print out flyers, hand them out around the neighborhoods, put them on people's mailboxes or on their doors, offer those homeowners a discount to try out your service. You can also contact businesses to see if you can bid on their next contract for mowing. So you just need to pick up a few customers and do the work at night and on the weekends as a side hustle, right? And then if you want to, if you really pick up a lot of customers, you can make it a full-time business. All right, the next one you might be a little surprised about, you might have seen it online, but why don't you start cleaning trash cans? I get this sounds kind of stupid, but there are people out there that are just making good money doing this because a lot of people don't want to do it, right? Trash cans stink because we put trash in them, right? You should clean them every month, but no one likes cleaning smelly trash cans. That is where you're going to come in to help them clean their trash cans for them. So once again on this one, if you want to market the business and you know try to get your name out there, I would do the same thing as we did before place flyers on the mailboxes on people's front doors. Now you can also buy door hangers and put those on the door, but those are more expensive. And I would do this for all these side hustles. Every time you put a flyer out there, just offer the first time customers a discount. Once you get them hooked on your service and you get that monthly recurring, the money just starts rolling in and you just keep building up clientele. So you're just gonna need for this one a car, a truck, or a van. You'll need a power washer, soap, and a really good brush. And I would get a long brush so you can, you know, brush into the trash can. Now, according to our research, trash bin cleaning services can earn between somewhere around $8 and $12 per can for monthly cleaning and $20 to $30 per can for just a one-time cleaning. Now, think about it. If you wash 50 trash cans a day, five days a week, and four weeks a month at $9.95 per trash can, you can earn about $500 a day or $2,500 a week, and that's about $10,000 a month. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about dumpster diving to find products to sell. So when you do this, you're going to need to focus on dumpsters behind retail stores, electronic shops, or places where you know, discarded items might still be in good condition. And I would avoid places where you might get hit up for trespassing and the police called on you. I would clean and restore these items if they really look good before listing them for resale. And this can significantly increase their value if you do this. You just need a car, gloves, and the locations to go do the dumpster diving. If you dumpster dive multiple times a week, you can make stops at dumpsters on your way home from work, and you can make anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 bucks a month from selling those trash treasures. All right, next one up. If you're afraid of heights, I would not do this one, and that's gutter cleaning, because you're definitely gonna need to climb a ladder to do this job, right? And this one is really a straightforward one to do. To get clients, same thing, you know, I would pass out door flyers around the areas, look for houses that have a lot of trees around them, and then same thing, offer them a discount for the first time service. This isn't an all year thing, so I would do the marketing right when the leaves are ready to fall off the trees and start marketing in the different neighborhoods. You wanna invest in quality gutter cleaning tools such as a sturdy ladder, a trowel, a bucket, gloves, and a high pressure hose or leaf blower. You also need a truck, van, or car to haul the equipment. Now, if you have a car, you might be saying, hey, Derek, how the heck do I get a ladder in a car? Well, there's Gorilla Ladders. I use them all the time. They fold up. They fit right in the back seat of a car. And I take them on all my rental properties and use them all the time. Now, the average cost of a gutter cleaning is anywhere between $125 and $250, depending on the size of the home and how many gutters they have. It, it may be more if you have a really large home. Now, I know you might be saying, hey, man, who really does this? And I'm going to tell you, my uncle did this same business right here. He was making around $75,000 a year for just three months worth of work. What he did is he hired a guy to do the gutter cleaning and he split the profits 50-50. So my uncle made $37,500 and that guy he hired made $37,500 in just three months. Now the next one, if you're really good at painting, you should start painting homes. And I'm gonna tell you, 
This one's a really good one. My brother-in-law does this all the time in his spare time and he makes a killing financially and he loves painting. To get clients, I would do the same thing as I've done the other ones. I would just go around the different neighborhoods, print out flyers, tape them on the door or put them on the mailbox and just keep doing that until you get different clients asking you and then you can get referrals from those clients after you do different jobs. This one's pretty straightforward. You just need a vehicle, brushes, rollers, or pans, and a drop cloth, or several drop cloths. And you're just gonna need a ladder, and I would use the Gorilla Ladder, like we just explained earlier. Generally, the cost to hire a painter to fully repaint like a bedroom is between 800 bucks and $1,200. Now, living rooms and other large spaces can cost upwards of 3,000 or more. So the, the cost we just discussed, they don't really include paint, so you need to charge the customer for the paint and materials because that can get really expensive. And I would think you could at least do one room or a couple rooms, you know, a few hours during the weeknight or on the weekend. Next one up is gonna be trash hauling or dumpster rental. So you can either do clean outs or you can do dumpster rentals. Now doing the dumpster rentals is easier to do but it's gonna cost you a lot more money up front because you gotta buy a huge dumpster. You can haul away people's trash. Like I just called a guy to come out and dispose of my old hot tub. And it cost me about $300 for him to do an hour to two hours worth of work. Now you do need a car with a hitch and a trailer to haul things away. You're also gonna need tools such as like a sledgehammer, saws, pry bars, wrenches, cordless drill, screwdriver, gloves and you know like a box cutter you also want straps for securing all that junk if you're going to haul that junk away if you're not using a dumpster now to get business on this one same thing you, you it's going to be a little different than flyers because you don't know when people need dumpsters but you can go to property managers or landlords I have rental properties and i use clean out people all the time to clean out my properties when i need uh, to re-rent them and somebody had moved out and left me a bunch of junk. So I would get business cards for this so you can hand out, you know, to potential clients like landlords or property managers. Many cities have real estate clubs, so you can always go to those and hand out your card. Now you can charge anywhere from $150 to $1,000 for residential trash removal. It just all depends on how much junk they have and how many trips you got to make. Okay, this next one may be really surprising for you, right? Because I, when I heard about it, I'm like, what the heck? I've never heard of that. It's called dryer vent cleaning, okay? And you're going to laugh. I know, like, dryer vent cleaning. You can clean out your own dryer vent. But this one's pretty easy to start and compared to some of those others, like junk removal. And the equipment that you'll need includes, like, a HEPA-filtered vacuum with, like, a dryer vent attachment. You'll need that. You, you need to get brushes, cleaning rods, and tools you also need an air compressor with long hoses. Now to promote this one, you can put flyers on the mailbox like we said before in different neighborhoods. You should also set up a website and try to get it ranked on Google for the keywords, you know, such as dryer vent cleaning, so you can get business that way. Social media is gonna be another great way to pick up business. Now on this one, you can charge 120 to 300 bucks per clean out. You also want to recommend to homeowners after you're done that they should clean their vent every six months or at least one time a year. And with that, this is what you do. You get their email and then you set them up to remind them every six to 12 months to get that cleaning and boom, you have repeat customers. Now, another one that kind of falls in line with dryer vent cleaning is gonna be duct cleaning. Now, if you wanna do both, you can offer both dryer vent and duct cleaning. To double up on you know making more money per customer but i would start with one to begin now the equipment you need for this one's going to be a lot more like you need a high powered vacuum you need brushes agitators air whoops you're going to need some compressed air tools and an inspection camera now to promote this service you need to really set up a website and get ranked on google that will really help you you can also put flyers on mailboxes, like we said, on the different other side hustles we mentioned. 
And then you can also advertise in a local paper or like a local mint. It's like a magazine that has all these contractors that you can, you know, buy from. And I do that in my neighborhood. Um, I get that all the time. And then like if I need carpet cleaning, I will go into that magazine and use one of those services. And I did that just last year. Now on this one, you can do pretty good. The total revenue potential for, you know, one client is $500 to $1,200 per job. It just all depends depends on the size of the home and how much duct work they have. Okay, so the next one up is garage organization for homeowners. So this is a really growing market. So in 2015, the US had 8.5 billion that came in for home organization. In 2022, the industry is gonna be projected to reach 12.7 billion, and that's by 2023. And now this is all for home organizing as a general thing, not just garage, but it shows you how much home organization or garage organization is a big deal. To get started, you want to read organizing books and follow, you know, some top home or garage organizing blogs to really understand what potential clients want. Now to market your new garage organization business, you need to create a profile for a service provider on Google Business. And then you also need to set up a website, you know, to get ranked on Google so people can find you. And what that does is when somebody types in a query like garage organizer or garage organization company, they can find your business or your side hustle. Now you want to get business cards and then you can do the same thing. Print out flyers, go around the mailboxes and people's doors and stick those out there. And social media is also another great way to find customers. Okay, so you're gonna to need to set a price. And based on what we did when we did some research for professional garage organization services, you can start around $2,000 per install and running between $2,500 and $5,000, you know, for organizing and setting everything up. The really high installs can be well over $10,000. Now, I like the sound of making $2,000 or $5,000 per job. So remember, just picking up a few jobs or one job a week, that extra cash is just incredible. And hopefully you can turn it into a full-time business. All right, well, those are my recommendations for some side hustles that may get you dirty uh, when doing the work. And you can start these side hustles and then turn them into a full-time business if you wanna make more money. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more videos on wealth building and making money, and let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.